solutions, even though they're listed as uh, 731, it was actually for a much later problem. Did anybody else notice this? Hmm? The problems that were assigned had solutions. If you look, the actual solution of 731 is actually 733. Did anybody else notice mm -hmm. this? Oh, but the problem is from the top of the solution. Pardon? Yeah, some of us just do the problem from the top of the solution. Or attempt to. Oh, you just look at the no. solutions. No, I'm we look at the problem that the solution is solved. I mean, but that's what I mean. You don't look no. at the book. Yeah. All right. Well, in that case, I, I want to do <coughs> these problems, but I want to do the problems in the book because there's a couple of the problems that I assigned you that use properties that are very important. So I want you to please take a look at this. I'm going to go through them and work through them. Now, this kind of stuff, you have to work. You've got to do these problems to get this down and leave it stay with you. Cramming, especially with the amount of material that's going to be coming at you, is going to be really, really hard on you if you try to do that. So let's go through these. This is 731, and this uses a property that we're going to do. For this one, they give a value of x of n. Can somebody read that to me? I don't want to carry around that thing. This is 731 out of the book, please. Anyway. about this, it is a, at a constant frequency, and here's how you know that. The coefficient of n in here, you can identify as just omega naught. That's a fun, that's a frequency. It doesn't change. So this thing's at a constant frequency. Here, this you can call omega 1 if you'd like, but this is going to be the other frequency of interest. Now, when it goes into a filter that has an h of omega, the way you get the output, and I put this down in the notes, is always if you have an x of n, it doesn't matter how many frequencies it's made up of, if x of n is really the summation of some a of n times cosine of omega n times n, where n goes from, it can go from 0 to capital N. You have n plus 1 value. So this is going to be n discrete frequencies. Does everybody follow me on this? The omega n can be anything. It can be pi over 100. It can be pi over 2. Follow me? It will be some range between 0 and 2 pi, though. I mean, anything beyond that is just really not doing anything. But that's the input. Now, when you have this input, now listen to me. You have it going into a filter. A filter was going to be evaluated at each one of these frequencies, and the filter will have both a magnitude and an angle. Does everybody understand that? So now, you're going to get the filter characteristics, h of omega n here, and I'm just going to say you're going to get them. I'm not even going to bother writing in kind of fancy terminology. We'll be able to evaluate that. But it will evaluate it so that we get the magnitude of the filter response and the angle of the filter response. In other words, if my h of, I'll call it h of omega n, was equal to, say, 2 plus j5 over 3 minus j6, for whatever reason, that's it, all right? Then what we're going to do is get a magnitude of that. The way you get a magnitude of it would be take the square root of 2 squared plus 5 squared over the square root of 3 squared plus 6 squared. That's the magnitude of the squared components and take the square root of it. Understand that class? How many understand what I'm up to here? Now the angle is important. The angle of the top term is just an inverse tan or tan to the minus 1 of 5 halves. Does everybody understand that? 5 has got the j in front of it, right? 2 is the real, so it's at an angle of inverse tan of 5 halves or a tan if you prefer, right? The angle of the bottom one is at 10 to the minus 1 of, this would be, now look, that's a minus, right? That means the angle will be minus. Do you follow me on this class? In other words, 
If you look at the bottom one here, if I'm out three on the real axis and I'm down six on the imaginary, this angle is negative right there. Does anybody follow me on that? That's sense negative. If it was going clockwise from the horizon, if it was up this way, it'd be positive. How many understand that? Very important you do. So this angle is going to be have a minus sign in front of it, if you will, and it would be 6 over 3. Now, I did that on purpose, and I'm blocking that. Okay with everything? Everybody see this? Please just follow me. I'm doing this so I don't have to, I don't want these mistakes on quizzes and exams. Now, this number right here is simply a magnitude. Do you all agree with me? We could calculate that if we wanted, right? But it's not necessary. The angle is the one that gets you. It's inverse tan of 5 halves. Now I have minus this tan, right? To the minus 1. When it comes upstairs, it becomes plus, right? Follow me on that? Instead of the minus in front of the tan, it would become a plus. How me understand that, please? Are you with me? If you have 1 over 30 degrees, right? That's really 1 at an angle of minus 30, correct class? If you have 1 and then 1 at an angle of 30, that's really equal to 1 at minus 30. Here I've got a minus angle. When it comes upstairs, it will become plus tan to the minus 1 of 6 thirds. And I know that's simply 2, but I wanted to show you. Now this is the angle. That is the magnitude. Follow me? How many see this? I know most of you know this, and maybe I'm making too big of a deal over it, but I see a lot of, a lot of things that concern me. Yes, sir? Is it plus that inverse tan or multiplied by? I couldn't hear you. Is it, it's plus that inverse tan? If you have an angle, what is it? If it's e to the j45 times e to the j45, what is that equal to? It's e to the j90, isn't it? You add the exponents. Follow? So now for this one, my input is just two, two different frequencies, right? Uh, we've got to get now the filter h of omega here, and that's from a difference equation. He gives it as what? y of n. Can somebody read that to me? It's equal to x of n plus uh, x of n minus 1. Plus x of n minus 1. Plus x of n minus 2 plus x of n minus 3. All right, here's the first property that I'm going to introduce based on that. And this is a property you need to know. It's the basis, it's a summation property. What I'm going to say if I have anything y of n equal to a summation, and I'm just going to say from i equals 0 to n, really doesn't matter what I put here, but I'm going to use i, of simply x of i here. You all agree that's legal. I could say I'm defining a sum, correct? Matter of fact, what I could do here is instead of this, the way this is done, I'm going to go ahead and say this is going to be equal to from 0 to n, and it will be x of n minus i. Follow me? Mm -hmm. n is a stable, right? And this is really what? Just is adding a bunch of terms together, correct class? Now what happens here? Well, if I look at this, um, I can say that this is really going to be equal to x of n plus x of n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus <coughs> x of n minus capital N. And maybe I shouldn't use a capital N there. I'll use a different symbol. How about if I use a k? Just so you don't start involving things in your mind. Are you with me? I'm just stating this. Now, you see how I can put this in terms of this form very quickly. Do you all agree with that class? The only thing you're going to do is have k here be 3, correct? Isn't that right, class? All right, now look. Isn't this, if I say y of n, right, that's equal to y of n, or I should say of n minus k plus the summation from i equals 0 to k minus 1 of x of n minus i. Just take a look what I've done here. Or I should put, uh, not that, this should be x, not y. This should be x. Do you follow me in this class? What I've done is now I've taken the top term here, 
the x of n minus k, and I've broken that out, and then I put the remaining part of that series from 0 to k minus 1 here. Do you all see that here? Mm -hmm. Give me a show of hands. Do you all follow me? Some of you know what I'm up to. Because now I can say, what is this right here? Well, isn't that really y of n minus, or y of, oh. What I needed to do is something else. I've got this thing. This actually should be, it is y of n. Let me do it this way. I hate to bring too many variables into it, but what I'm going to do is this. If I define uh, Yeah, I can do it this way. I can call it y of k here and just say it's going to be a sum of the x functions, x of n, all the way up there. I'll do it this way. Then if I say I have, because it's, it's based on the x of n, right, for the current value of n, then I can say that y of k minus 1 is simply equal to the summation from i equals 0 <coughs> to k minus 1 of x of n minus i. I'll leave all the n's on that side. That way I won't have an n in there to worry about with the actual transforms. Now if you take a look at this, then I can say my y of k here is equal to x of k. That's not equivalent to what we started with. What do you, you're talking, uh, you're talking about this right here? Yeah. All right, let, I'll do it with the double then. You're absolutely right. What I really need to do is say that y of n here, if that's the case, that's equal to a summation, right, from i equals 0 to, I'll call it k, of x of n minus k. Now that's the thing we started with, right? Now if we take a look at that, remember the k variable doesn't appear over here. That's the problem. So that's where I didn't want to put the index there. But if you look at this right here, wouldn't that be n minus i, not n minus k? Yes, it is. You're absolutely right. If we're starting, if we're right there, the problem is I want this k indexed over here. Then if I have y of n comma k minus 1, that's equal to the summation here of i equal to 0 to k minus 1 of x of n minus i, and that you should agree with, right? I need to get two variables here if I've got an n and a k of x. That's the problem. I didn't want to do that, but I did. And that, therefore, I can say this here is going to be equal to actually x of n minus k here plus the summation of i equals 0 to k minus 1 of x of n minus i. And then I can say this y of n comma k here will be equal to x of n minus k plus y. And then it's going to be uh, n comma k minus 1 here. <coughs> And that's a double sum. That's, that's, that's legit right there, right? The problem is, that transform is not going to work right. Right there, the way I'm doing What am I doing here that's wrong here? The upper top part is right. This, what? 
I know we can just sum it at zero. Can we just take the Fourier transform and then factor in our y omega and x? We're gonna we're gonna take the well, Ploss transform. I mean, sorry, the uh, Fourier transform of this in a second. But the thing is, I'm trying to do it in a more general sense instead of starting at zero. Grand. The way the way it's done in the book, and I didn't want to do this, but I'm gonna have to. If I take a look at this, what he's going to do is say, and unfortunately, I don't have. Stepping off the stage. If I do that thing with a double sum, I can't. I can't explain that unless I do a Z transform. I don't try. To, I try to do that. He doesn't have the sum property. Yet. right here where I'm going to sum all the way to n. I'm basically got just the sum, but it starts at zero, not an arbitrary n. That's the problem. You follow me? So I'm starting at zero. If you look at this, then I can say that y of n actually is equal to x of n. I'll break out the top term, and then it's going to be plus the summation from x of i here, and i will go to zero to n minus one. You all follow me on this? This will work. I didn't want to do it this way, but I'm going to have to. Now, if I, y'all agree with that, first of all. I just broke out the first top, the last term. Now, this is equal to actually x of n, right? Plus y of n minus 1, and that's y of n. Y'all agree with that? Yeah. And then you can take the transform of both sides, and in doing so, then you get y of omega is equal to x of omega plus, and then it would be e to the minus j omega times simply y of omega here. You can take that to the other side, and now you have y of omega here times 1 minus e to the minus j omega be equal to x of omega. I'm just rearranging it, and you can see now I have, you all agree with that one? Remember, this sum starts at 0, though. This is not a running sum, right? That's something you have to keep in mind. Now, in R's, I erased it, but I'll get to it. Anyway, you get this, right? So this is just a summation. It's like an integration. It's akin to that. Now we can get H of omega here would be equal to simply Y of omega over X of omega, and therefore it would be equal to 1 over 1 minus E to the minus J omega. That's my point to this. Now I'll go. Uh, that would be something if you had a running sum uh, that summed all values from 0 to n. We have something like that, only it's regressive. It's adding them all. It actually is a running sum, but the problem is it's in the backwards direction, I believe. When we looked at ours, what was our y of n? Uh, x of n plus x of n minus 1 plus x of n minus 2. It's equal to x of n plus x of n minus 1 plus x of n minus 2. 
plus x of n minus 3, correct? Yes. Now, with that one, you're not starting at 0, right? You're starting at some value n, and you're going back four places. n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, right? So there's four places in the sum. The way you could get this was to sum, right? If you thought about this, if I sum all values from x of i, from i equals 0 to n, start there, right? And then subtract off what? n minus 4. That's right. Subtract off i equals 0 to n minus 4, and then of x of i, and then you would have y to y. Do you agree with me, class? Yeah. Now, why did I do that? Well, why then, pardon me? When I look at this, I know that this one right here, I know the transform of, right? Correct? And when I look at this one, I also know the trans, well, uh, transform of, yes. Correct, class? So uh, what actually happens here? This is going to be, when I do the transform of these two, I'm going to have for that particular one to n, this is the transform. This, you know what? Yeah, that's right. But here's the thing. phase e to the minus j yeah that's that's actually going to work then we get y of omega will be equal to transform of that That goes to n, but the problem is this is not that, so I need to call this a different variable. I'll call this like uh, z of n right here, and this uh, would be z of n, and then this would be z of omega, and that would be equal to y of omega here, which is the definition of that, minus, and that would be a phase shift of 4, e to the minus j times 4 omega times y of omega. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll get back to you on that one, and I apologize. I was, didn't mean to get hung up on that one. Anyway, what the real truth of the matter is I want to show you the summing property, and I looked it up. <laughs> So I will return. All right, next. Let me go ahead and do this next. Uh, if we were looking at this, though, just let me finish this right here. If you have the actual summation that he gave you is y of n is equal to x of n. This is a brute force way of doing it. Plus x of n minus 1 plus x of n minus 2 plus x of n minus 3. Here's a way you can do it. I don't prefer to do it this way. This is the brute force way. Simply take a transform of both sides in the Fourier domain. Now you go ahead and you get y of omega equal to x of omega. And then these delay operators just bring out that phase, e to the minus j times n omega. So you can go ahead and do it. You get 1. It's going to be plus e to the minus j omega there. Then it's going to be plus e to the minus j 2 omega here. And then the final one is e to the minus j 3 omega there. Are you all with me? Now, once you have that, to get the transfer function, you divide y by x. And you get h of omega is equal to y of omega divided by x of omega right here. And then that's equal to this, <laughs> simply the sum, 1 plus e to the minus j omega plus e to the minus j 2 omega plus e to the minus j 3 omega. 
And I see that as a series that I could mess around with very quickly and get a, a close form, but I'm just going to leave it for the, like that for now. Are you with me what I've done so far? This, I'm just going to brute force this one. So now I have this. The next thing I can do is really this. I mean, the actual next, my next step is going to be to get the output. Since I have only two frequencies, I can say that I need to evaluate this at two different frequencies, one at pi over two and at the other at pi, correct? Just watch this part. This is important. So now I can say if I want h of pi over two, that's in radians, that's really 90 degrees, correct? Yeah. Now, if you have 90 degrees here, that's going to be equal to one plus well, e to the minus j pi over 2 is what? Minus j, right? Minus j. I mean, does everybody understand that? When you think about j, anything, you're thinking about this. This is real positive. This is j. This is real minus, And this is minus j. So if you have something, you, this would be negative angles going this way, positive angles going this way, right? And this length is 1 on both of these. Now, it's like the hands of a clock. If I have e to the minus j pi over 2, I'm down here. So it's minus j. This yeah. is just minus j. You can see the clock winding in the opposite direction. That's really going to be what? One. Minus 1, right? Yeah. This <coughs> one winds it again. It's 90 degrees every time. Next time, it's plus j, right? So it's plus j. What's all this going to be equal to? Zero. Zero. Fantastic. Which means when I look at my output, there will be no pi over 2 in the output. No cosine of pi over 2. Next part i got to do is h of pi, though, right? What's that going to be? Go up here. That'll be 1, right? <coughs> Plus, and what is, what's e to the minus j pi, anyone? That's Just look at the clock. Minus one. minus one. Keep going. Plus what is one. E to the, hmm? Plus one. Go ahead. And minus one. All right. What do you notice? Zero as well. Correct, class? Now, what that means is my output on this one would be equal to y of n, and I'm going to do some more. y of n is going to be equal to the magnitude of h of pi over 2 times the cosine of pi over 2n plus the phase angle of this thing, which doesn't matter anyway, plus the magnitude of h of pi times the cosine here of pi n plus the phase angle of h of pi. And the thing about it is, since h of pi and h of pi over 2 is 0, it's 0. That's it. You agree, class? How many see this? There's a solution, there's a close form for this, but I'm not even going to bother with it on this one. Let me do the next problem. I want to work these sequentially because there are some very important things that come up. understand one thing. When you have a cosine of pi n, there's only a couple of values it can have. What is the cosine when n is 0? 1, right? When n is 1, minus 1. When n is 2, 1. When n is 3, minus 1. This is just minus 1 flipping back and forth, right? It's like what? Minus 1 to the nth power, if you really want to know the truth. That's all that is. What about this one? What can the values be at? n equals 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. At what? Cosine of pi over 2 is Zero. cosine of pi minus, minus one. 1. So it's going from what? 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0. Follow me on this? 
There's not many values to worry about, but you have to at least have an idea. The key thing is the frequency. Here, the frequency for that is omega is equal to zero. There is no variation in time. It's zero for DC. This is the first frequency, call it, I'll call this omega zero is pi over two. And here, omega one is pi. Now this one, we're gonna get a non-zero output. Now give me the difference equation, because it's usually given in terms of a difference equation. Y of n is equal to x of n plus 4x of n minus 1 plus 3x of n minus x 3. X of n plus, say it again? Uh, 4x of n minus 1. Okay. Uh, 3x of n minus 3. Minus 3. You'll notice it's not just a sequential series regression. There's a, a gap with the min n minus 2, isn't there? So yeah. for this one, we're going to do just like we did before. We're going to go ahead and take the Laplace, I mean the, the Fourier transform, discrete time Fourier transform of both sides. And when we do this, we get y of omega, correct class? And over here, what do we get? Uh, x of omega. X of omega. omega. Now I'm factoring out x of omega, because I know this will be x of omega, and I factor it out, I get a 1 there. Now, that 4 will be in there, right? And then the delay operator of 1 brings out the e to the minus j omega, correct? Just e to the minus j omega. <coughs> Next, it's going to be plus 3 times e to the minus j, 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 3 omega. 3 omega, and that's important. <coughs> that's the filter characteristic. I mean, that's basically the property. And why don't I just divide by x <coughs> of omega right away? and not waste everybody's time, and call this h of omega, right? Now, when you're doing this problem, this is my suggestion to you. You evaluate this filter at the different frequencies. That's what you need. I'll take you through the entire in out. Follow me? So on this one, I need the filter evaluated at zero. So there's my filter right there, right here. What is h of zero? Um, Let's just yeah. add up the numbers, right? 1 plus eight. 4 plus 3 or 8. You all agree with that? Class, can you follow me on this one? Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Back there. And I appreciate the enthusiasm. God knows I need it. Now, next I have pi over 2, right? What's it going to be for pi over 2, anyone? Um, yeah. <coughs> 1 plus 4 is 8. 1 plus pi over 2 is 90, right? So it would be 1 four J. minus 4j, well, right? Four plus, plus, what about this one? Uh, plus 3j. Yes, sir. I'm just confused on how you got the y of n equation. How I got what? The y of n equation. It's stated in the book. That's the problem. Oh. That's why. It, all these are difference equations. You know, you're used to seeing differential, right? In discrete time, they're different. That's the way it is. just is. So for this one, I was a little sloppy here, but this is going to be 1 minus j4, 4j, and then plus j3. Does everybody know how I got that? Looking at this. Class, remember, you're just putting in omega is equal to pi over 2, correct? You, 1 is just 1. Then if I have e to the minus j pi over 2, that's really what? 1 at an angle of minus 90 or minus j. Look yeah. at the, the clock. Think of the clock. This, I wind the hands not minus pi over 2, but I do that three times or I go back to plus j, right? Follow me? So this is going to be really what? 1 minus j, isn't it? Please pay attention to this. So my filter has the property 1 minus j here. Now, this is what you have to do to that. You have to put it in terms of a magnitude and an angle. Think about this for one second. If I have something that's out one and then down one, right, and this would be the j-axis, what's the magnitude of this? Uh, like root two. It's going to be square root of 2. It's at a 45 degree angle, right? So this is going to be root 2. The angle here in radians would be? 45 uh, degrees or is pi over four. 4. Understand everyone? 45 degrees is pi over 4. <laughs> so this is going to have a magnitude of the square root of 2, and it will be an angle, radian angle, of minus pi over 4, or minus 45 degrees. Agree? Now the next one we have to do is get h of pi for this one. What's that? Just look at it. 
What is it going to be? One for sure, right? right. What's what's e to the minus j pi? Minus one, correct? So this is going to be minus four. Keep going. Plus, what is e to the minus j three pi? Think about it. We're going to get minus one again, aren't we? Isn't that right, class? Yes. So it's going to be. Is that right? Yeah. All right, what's that value going to be? <laughs> Minus 6. Do you agree with me, class? All right, what, by the way, uh, I'm going to tell you one other thing. We're going to get a minus 6 here. Now, what? when you have minus 6, please listen to this. People will not do this unless I really underscore. Minus 6 can be rendered like that, and it's fine. You can just leave it at minus 6. But oftentimes, what this is is 6 at an angle of minus or plus pi. All right. It's a magnitude of 6, and it's at 180 degrees. Now when we go to get y of n, y of n itself will always be equal to the magnitude of the, if you, the finite number of frequencies. is the magnitude of the actual h evaluated at the frequency of interest. First, we're going to do it at dc. There's the dc term, right? So 1 times h of 0, or 8. And there is no phase relationships at DC. You just put an 8 there. Next, we have 2 cosine of pi over 2. Follow me? You'll notice the magnitude of the filter at pi over 2 is square root of 2, right? So now I'm going to put plus 2 square root of 2 times the cosine of pi over 2n. And here you're going to have to add the phase angle right here of that transfer function. So inside of here, minus it's going to be minus pi over 4, right? There's the phase angle. Does everybody see this? Mm -hmm. Give me a show of hands here. I want to make sure I see. In the back there, follow me? All right, next term, this one is at pi, right? And h of pi is minus 6, or 6 at an angle of minus, minus 100, or minus pi, right? So here, it's plus 6 times 3, or 18, right, times the cosine of pi n minus or plus pi. It doesn't matter if it's minus or plus pi. Understand? Yeah. Yes, sir. Would you, do you want to just write that as negative 18 cosine pi If you wanted to, but then it would have to be just cosine of pi n. Right. There's no phase. It would be the same thing. Okay. I prefer, I'm just going to give you a piece of advice. Keep all these coefficients positive. It's easier on yourself that way. And put the phase angle inside. It's much easier overall to do that, especially when you've got later in your coursework when you've got more and more things going on. Because it's, it's real easy to forget. Uh, I mean, when you make, you can get sine errors. Anytime you get minus out here, there's always problems. I'm just telling you that when you get long terms of them. All right, that's that problem. And, and can you just check in the book if they have that, please, somebody? Isn't there a solution for this one or not? Well, wait a second. Don't you have a, you have a lot uh, Is that solution? It is not. All right, this one isn't that, that's how you do it. Now the next one, I think is, but it's like the first solution. It's listed as 731, but it's actually 733. Do this with me, class. This is a really, these are really important to see, too. In the book, he does a lot of this stuff with Z transforms that we will get to. But Z transform, I don't go there until I'm done with discrete Fourier transform. That's the next thing to cover. So work with me on this one. What is the next problem? X is seven. In, go ahead. Three plus four cosine pi over two n plus. Oh, but X of n equals your way ahead. Of me. Three, three plus four cosine. Three plus four times cosine pi over two n plus pi over four. As like a plus pi over four. Yeah. Good. This is a good problem. And I'll get the difference equation in one second. You left one up here. All right, what's the difference equation? Y of n plus y of n minus 1 is equal to x of n plus x of n. Equal to x of n? Plus x of n minus 1. Or minus x of n. All right, so he's got a difference equation. This is a very common type of difference equation. 
it's going to have terms on both sides that are indexing. This is like a moving average kind of deal. This is a moving average kind of deal too. Not quite, <coughs> but it is. So now what we need is the transfer function of this. Remember, every time we have a delay here, when we do a transform, it just brings out a phase. E to the j minus j times omega times this index value. So here, I can say that y of omega would be 1 plus e to the minus j omega here. Do you agree with me there, first of all? And on the other side, what happens? That's x of omega, right? I factor out the 1 there, e to the minus j omega. Do you all agree with me? Now remember the tricks with the sines and the cosines, because these always come to play right here. Now I need the transfer function. I'll stop for a second. People have said that they spend too much, they can't think because they're copying. So I'm going to just stop for one second. Think now, get it down, and just think what I'm saying. All right. I want, I want h, right? I want h of omega. h of omega is equal to y of omega over x of omega, right? That's equal to 1 minus e to the minus j omega over 1 plus e to the minus j omega. I believe this one has an answer, the correct answer, but it's unfortunately listed as 830 or 731 in the book. This is for problem 733 in the solutions. Now, what, pray tell, do you think I'm going to do based on the last couple of lectures? Take a shot in the dark. I want to make it look like something I understand. I'm going to factor out an e to the minus j omega over 2 so I can turn them into sines and cosines. How many at least had an inkling that's what I was up to? No question. So, what? I just said no question. <laughs> Here e to the minus j omega over 2, which gives me e to the j omega over 2, minus e to the minus j omega over 2, divided by e to the minus j omega over 2 times e to the j omega over 2 plus e to the minus j omega over 2. I'll stop. Do you all see that? I simply factored out what? The e to the minus j omega 2 from top and bottom. Correct, class? Yeah. You all got this right here? This is a trick you'll be doing all the time. Now, you all give me that these two cancel, which is a godsend here. That means I have this. Now, question. What does this one look like it's going to turn into? 2j sine of theta, right? Remember, it's 2j times the sine of the argument. So I'm going to take it up here. So this one, when I look at this, my h of omega is going to be 2j times the sine of omega over 2. Don't forget that's omega over 2. What about the bottom one? 2 times cosine of omega over 2, correct? Now you'll notice the 2's cancel, but the j's still there. Very important. You all see this, class? Trying to read eyes and see if he's looking at the computer or phones. Huh. All right, let's get rid of that. Two and two. I got a J. What's the function I want to replace the sine over cosine by? Tangent. Tangent, right. And this is in the solutions, I believe. So we're going to replace this and say this is equal to J times the tangent of omega over two. Agree? Now, I've got my transfer function in a very easy to understand form. I didn't have to do it that way. I could evaluate it right here. But it may be sticky if an angle like 28 degrees is there or something. All right? It's not so obvious. That's <coughs> obvious, and that's the reason I went the extra mileage there. Now, in, with this, the difference equation was given, and I took the transform. So now I have h of omega, and this is my x of n. Keep thinking this way, class. What I've really got is an x of n at discrete frequencies. What's the frequency of the three? Anyone? Zero. zero. Omega is zero. Frequency of this? Pi over, two. Pi over two. There is an additional angle you don't worry about. Leave it there. Understand? That angle doesn't make one bit of difference. So now when I, my x of n is going in to my filter, my output y of n is just going to be these terms with the addition of the magnitude of the filter value at those frequencies in front of it, 
And if it's a varying frequency, or uh, if it's a frequency other than zero, then inside the cosine waveform, the angle will be added. Please check me on this. So here, when I look at the first one, I have three. What's the frequency again of three? Zero. What is tangent is zero? Zero. Zero, so we don't worry about the three. Follow me? It will not get through. What's the frequency of uh, the next term, or the only other term? It's pi over two, right? So now you evaluate this at pi over two, which is going to be j times the tangent of pi over four. What is the tangent of 45 degrees or pi over four? One. One. Therefore, it is j. Now hear me. j is one at an angle of pi over two. So this is rendered or given as one at an angle of pi over two. And you've got to make sure you get that, right? It's an exponential notation. Magnitude is one, angle e to the j pi over two. Does everybody see that? Now that's the value of the filter right here, right? Right? The magnitude is one. So now when we get the y of n, the filter response, we take four here times h of omega, the magnitude, which is one, so it's just four. Then it's cosine of pi over two n plus, and you'll notice there's pi over four here, already there, correct class? And I'm adding to it a pi over two, which would be three fourths pi, right? Agreed class? So it should be three fourths pi. Could you look in his book and see if he earned the solutions I posted? Is it? Yes. All right, good. Now, I'll tell you one other thing that may do. Don't get hung up about this. They can use this thing and expand it. It's what, cosine A, cosine B. You remember me doing that kind of crap of sine A, sine B? Don't worry about that. That's the right answer. And I'm glad they gave it that way. All right, is this helping? Mm -hmm. I want to keep working through this. I'm gonna sh I might, if I have the time, I'll be able to get to what I really wanted to. But. Let's do the next problem. I want you to do it this time with me, because by this time you're caught on to the trick. I think. All right, what's the next one? 734, right? What is it? Anyone? Uh, X of n is equal to 9 plus 2 cosine pi, pi over 2. X, X of n is equal to 9, did you say? 9 plus 2 cosine pi over 2 times n plus 3 cosine pi over Cosine pi? Pi. All right. Well, he's given us nice, easy angles. I mean, frequencies, pi over 2, pi over and pi are, are ideal. All right, that's x of n. What's the difference equation? <coughs> uh, 5 times y of n plus 3 times y of n minus 1 plus y of n minus 2 is equal to 7x of n plus 6x of n minus 1 minus x of n minus 2. Minus x yeah. n minus 2? Yeah. Check that. Is that right? It's right. Yeah. All right. It's a difference equation. You know what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm going to take the Fourier transform of both sides, discrete time Fourier transform of both sides. Now, because time's of essence and I blew a lot of it, I'm just going to factor out the y of n on, or the y of omega on this side. And then I've got 5 here, right? Mm -hmm. What's the next term? Plus? Uh, the 3 e to the negative j omega. Omega, keep going. You're right. Plus, uh, my, no, it's plus. Yeah, it's plus e to minus 2j omega. 2 omega right there, right? Mm -hmm. It's always going to be this times omega, yeah. the delay. On the other side, guys, I'll take the x of omega right out in front. Essentially, the next step is what? Divide. I'm going to divide both sides by x of omega, correct? And then I'm going to divide both sides by this coefficient right here. So I get my h of omega. I'll put it here for everybody. h of omega will be y of omega over x of omega. And that will be equal to 7 plus 6 e to the minus j omega, the minus j omega minus e to the minus j 2 omega over 
5 plus 3e to the minus j omega plus e to the minus j 2 omega. Do you all agree with me? I have a comment that I want you to listen to. Oftentimes what the book does is they want everything in terms of e to the j positive. So they'll mu multiply top and bottom by e to the uh, plus j2 omega. So there'll be an e to the plus j2 omega here, an e to the j omega here, and then just one here. Follow me? They do that. It doesn't matter. You don't need to do that. The only time you fuss with these angles is if you can break out a sine or a cosine. That's it. <coughs> Understand? Don't worry about the way he does it. He's just doing that because he's familiar with that, using, doing it that way. So now, when I look at this, my frequencies are what, class? Zero. Zero, Zero right? That's omega there. Here it's? Omega two. That's the omega there, called omega zero. And this is? Omega one is pi. So now we have to evaluate this thing at those frequencies. Real quick, I'm about out of time, I can tell. What is h of zero, people? Just seven over five. Seven, five. It's just oh, adding all these up yeah. and dividing it, right? So I got seven plus minus six. one, right? Or six plus six is 12, right? Yeah. And on the bottom, what do I have? Nine, nine, correct? 12 ninths, right? Or four thirds. What is h of pi over two? That's another one we've got to have, right? Because pi over two. What is it? Well. Just think, I'm going to do it right here. If you look at this, 7 is the same there, 5 is the same there, it doesn't matter. Here, I have e to the minus j pi over 2 or minus j, correct? Make sure you see that when I put omega here is, is going to be equal to pi over 2. This renders e to the minus j pi over 2 or j, minus j. So this is going to be minus j times 6. This one is what? Minus. So plus one, right? Minus or minus one or plus one. Everybody agree with that? Yes. What is, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now here, this is going to be <coughs> minus J3 here, right? And then minus one there. Correct, class? Just take a look. What happens next? Let me finish this one. This has got a nice trick to it. So here I have what on top? I have eight minus j6, do you agree with that? And downstairs I have what? Four minus j3. Four minus j3. Stare at that for one second. Who sees what that is? Oh. Can't you fit, factor a two out of here and get four minus j3 on top? And get two times four minus j3 divided by, so it's really two, isn't it? That's a godsend, right? So this is two, no angle, thank God. Are you with me? How many see that? Let me finish this one. What about the next one? H of pi. You know, you love H of pi because that means all these exponentials are either minus one or, or plus one. All right? So what, what happens for this one? I'm going to have what? Seven, seven minus six. And this is what? It's pi, right? E to the minus j pi is minus one. So seven minus six is one, right? And? Minus one. Minus the minus is plus one, right? Well, it, it's either j two pi is two pi. So <laughs> okay, yes, yeah. minus one. So minus. And, and what is that going to be? Zero. Zero. Thank you. So this is zero. You only need the, the top, don't you? As long as the bottom's finite and it is. A great class. If that's zero, we don't care about that one, do we? Now just listen to me, so I'm, I'll be done here. What does that mean? Y of n is class. Take the DC term, which is. Four thirds. four thirds times no, nine. nine, right? Twelve. I'll just put four thirds times nine. That's the DC term. Next term is, is two times, times two, or four times cosine of pi over, pi over two. And is there a phase angle with that one? No. No. God bless it. All right. <laughs> and there ain't no other term. Let the English department write me a nasty letter about using paint in class. All right, class, I'm sorry about the first part. I'll, I'll get this right with you next time. Oh, yeah. Fridays, this stuff, and I mean, it's this homework, the past couple of homeworks is going to cover it. So, really, that.
that's sort of accumulation of everything. Uh, you, if I asked you to calculate the DFT of something, a series, you know, yeah, a to the it. n, one half to the n u of n, you can do it. But it's essentially that one. It's four thirds of the DTFT. Then you're on the right. Now.